I'm gonna change the head on the, the drum head. I'm getting a Remo Black Max. Oh yeah, I'm excited. Uh, yeah, shout out to Pearl Taiwan for hooking me up with this marching snare drum. Appreciate that. And shout out to Vader for always hooking me up with what I need. Uh, they've been they've been strong supporters of what I'm doing. Thank you. Wait, is, is this a Remo Black Max? Yes. Yes. All oh, snaps. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Let me have that. I'll take that off your hands. I'll keep it. I'm happy now. Yeah, I got the Black Max. Oh, shoot. Oh, oh. Sorry about that. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know if I need this on the, on the bottom, but I'm definitely going to use this on top. This is the head that comes with the, uh, with the Pearl Snare Drum, but I'm going to change it to the Black Max right there. You know. I might even, uh, I might, no, I'm not gonna do that. I might keep it. I might keep the head. <laughs> so, um, I call this the, uh, pyramidal, py uh, pyramid muscle failure. So, this is a Jinzi Tai Lenshi, which is from the So, four on each hand. Uh, uh, four counts on each hand, and then eight counts on each hand, sixteen counts on each hand. I'll show so, you. So, four hands, one hand, eight hands, same hand. Here we go. Okay. If it's too easy, then um, that's when the metronome comes into play. You'll raise up the metronome, uh, the beats per minute. So for example, that was probably around 105 BPM, maybe, if I'm correct. You know, I would bump it up to 115 to 120, and it would go faster, so, for example. He said, if you think it's too easy, you can raise the speed up to 150 or 160. two main aspects of traditional grip. The first one is the fulcrum point. At the fulcrum point is where you will produce rebound from, right? Just use the handshake technique to practice getting rebound. It should feel very natural. 
I forgot to mention, you're going to press down with your thumb, kind of. This part. There's a line right here at your thumb. Yeah. That's where you want to put your stick. That's where you're going to use it to press it down. Now you say, yes, I got rebound. That's cute. But then you run into a new problem. You have no stick control. So, you're going to use your index finger and place it over the top of your stick. Now, despite whatever somebody has told you about traditional grip with the index finger, you will, under no circumstances, use this finger to produce rebound because you will hurt your finger. It hurts. So you just have to use your index finger for control, really. It also stops it from sliding back and forth, right, when you're playing. So. All right, and finally, um, the middle finger, it does nothing. It just sits there. Your ring finger and index, uh, pinky finger, guess what? It does nothing. <laughs> so the reason people think it does something is they think you have to grip it like this, it's in play. But really what's happening is, especially when you're using the finger control technique, aka your thumb, to press down, sometimes your fingers will release off the stick when you're just going, when you're blasting. All right? It does, it does that naturally. And then quick note, when you're doing a double stroke row, for example, so that's a whole different technique, but I don't think I have enough time to go over that. But basically, your, th your uh, middle finger and ring finger and pinky will stick to the stick naturally when you do that. When you're doing, uh, I call the press, the press technique, the up and down movement for the double stroke row. It will stick to the, your fingers will stick to the stick naturally. You just really have to worry about two things. Um, the fulcrum point to produce rebound and then the stick control with your index finger. And the rest will naturally fall in its place. All right. And that concludes my uh, SDJ Mini League Live 2019 tour. Yeah, what am I gonna do after this? I don't know. Um, it's been a fun ride. I don't know what's gonna happen next. Um, you know, I'll be back on YouTube posting videos and stuff, and uh, I keep practicing. I keep grinding, make my show better. But I don't know what I'm gonna do after this. Um, I guess I'll figure it out. Um, oh yeah, but eat this pizza now, though. I get asked a lot of how I managed to get this lifestyle. How did I get invited to these places? Well, of course, people only see things on the surface, but you don't see none of the risks or sacrifices or struggles you have to go through just to make it. And remember, success is a journey. There might be a few ups, and there's definitely going to be a lot of downs, and it's up to you to navigate through that weather. When you put in that hard work and effort, and you go into this world fearlessly, you have a pretty fair shot of hitting the successful part of your journey. Even when things feel like it's a failure, the only time it's truly a failure is when you decide to actually quit. Thanks again to all my loyal supporters for watching my episodes of Life as an SD, and I hope you guys have a pleasant rest of the year. Until next season, peace.